Hey guys, uh, Kees Regeling from Holland. Um, I looked at uh, a video from uh, Aaron Newlands and um, I commented on it. Um, and from that moment I thought um, I wanted to give it a go, uh, making a small tutorial um, and show you some of the stuff I learned show all of you uh, new guys or um, guys who have done it um, years ago and uh, come back to the hobby. Um, show you some of the things I did um, and what I think of them um, and why I think you should do uh, things the way I did or uh, at least my experience uh, on this uh, subject. So I hope um, you can bear with me for uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, because uh, I'm never short of stuff, so uh, I can keep on rambling and rambling and rambling. Um, the phrase, uh, to make a long story short, uh, would never suit me. So <laughs> I hope you uh, like the video. Um, I'll turn the camera around and show you what I want to show you. Here we go. Hey guys, it's me, Kees Regling from Holland. Last week, or uh, last weekend I should say, um, I was doing what I always do on my iPad, uh, looking through some videos, great videos of all you guys, um, and I came uh, to uh, Aaron Newland's channel, and Aaron um, does some, um, some waffling, some chatting about um, the purpose of our beautiful modeling hobby. Um, what it can bring uh, to young people and why young people should come or uh, also the reason uh, why young people stay away. Um, as you all know we recently had some uh, <coughs> discussions on uh, some channels of you guys uh, about making comments and then some uh, idiot joker places a very rude comment um, and as Cohen says um, from the art of the comment, uh, it's obvious that he knows something about uh, modeling. Um, but in all fairness, he knows nothing. Uh, or at least that's my opinion. Um, what I think is uh, beautiful about uh, the YouTube channel community, um, I haven't been here so long, but uh, from what I've seen, um, uh, you guys really help each other. Um, you make it fun. I think, and as I said in my comments to Aaron and to some uh, some of you other guys, uh, have fun because that's what counts. Um, we're not ful for fulfilling uh, any job with our um, hobby. Some of us do. Um, they made it uh, quite professionally and uh, due to good reasons because those guys are uh, unbelievably good. But it doesn't mean that um, we do less. Um, I think from the work I see from uh, Cohen, from Hamilka Barkas, um, Gilbert from Red Dragon Model Works, um, and all you guys, in all fairness, you make beautiful models. Um, as you would um, say yourself, as I do myself, uh, not every model is a success, or at least you think it's not a success. Um, but I think that would never be a reason not to show it, because um, everybody thinks uh, somebody else's work is better than it's than uh, than your your own work, as I do with mine. Um, I think you all all you all of you guys are much more talented than I am, and perhaps uh, you guys think uh, the same about my work, or uh, you see some of my work and think, well, I wish my model would turn out that nice. But in all fairness, I think we all have. Uh, the same issues on that. Um, but that could never be a reason to stop. <clears throat> I think uh, the beauty of our hobby uh, has always been uh, here. Um, as soon as the first plastic model kit came onto the market, um, I think the, the reason why they made them uh, was because it's fun to make them. <clears throat> and I think that has not never ever changed. Uh, level of detail, uh, level of quality, um, the available accessories, paints, etc. Um, has all been um, 
lift it up as all technical stuff does. It grows in the years and uh, gets better and better and better. Um, but still, um, an old Airfix kit for me um, give me one of the first editions and I'd be a very happy camper. Um, I don't need uh, a, a multi hundred dollar costing Tamiya or Hasegawa kit uh, to have fun because uh, everything I do, everything uh, which involves my uh, trusty glue, my paintbrushes, my uh, airbrush, that's fun. That's what modeling is about for me. Well, that was uh, about four minutes of, uh, of me rambling on. Um, looking at Aaron's uh, video made me realize that uh, perhaps I could uh, also make uh, a humble edition. Um, most of you guys will already all know what I'm uh, about to tell, um, but I would like to share it um, for those who uh, do not have so much experience or just uh, returning to the hobby or, or um, for other reasons uh, just started it or uh, for all you young guys out there. Um, please bear with me a couple more minutes and I will uh, tell you some of my experiences and bit of uh, what I've learned um, from model making. As I started, uh, I think I was 16, 14, 14, 16, somewhere in that region. Um, my first kits uh, were all built with uh, the help of my older brother and back then I didn't even paint them, I just slapped on the decals and job done. Um, then I left the hobby for some years because, uh, as you all know, uh, mopeds, uh, motorcycles, cars, girls, all things in life that uh, pass us by <coughs> or come by in our life um, distracted me away from the hobby and I think I was uh, 21 or 22 years of age when I started again uh, at this moment I'm 44 years so the last 20 years I've been uh, uh, at the hobby some years a bit more some years a bit less and as I returned to the hobby, I did everything with a simple hobby knife, a pair of scissors, um, sprue cutters, I never ever heard of them. And uh, as my first few models went by, um, I bought some magazines, um, looked through them, international scale modeler, um, fine scale modeler, these types of magazines. And I really enjoyed uh, reading them. Um, and of course, um, you want to get better. Uh, you see what uh, other people make and how they make it, and you start investing in some material. So um, my old trusty paintbrushes um, went into an empty uh, canister uh, for storage, and I bought my first airbrush. And my first airbrush looked something like this. Um, it was an item from Revel, um, which is. Uh, widely available in Holland. Uh, nothing wrong with it. It is a double action um, and it's very basic. It's very simple to clean. Uh, parts can be cleaned easily because due to their big size. These types, I know there are more brands on the market and I hope the camera picks up the nozzle, which use these types of nozzles. Um, they are fairly easy to clean, um, only disadvantage this airbrush is that it it's a big uh, diameter I think this is 0.7 or 0.8 um, which is a bit big for <laughs> detail work but hey back then I didn't care uh, I could brush on my colors and uh, I maintained it well uh, and I hope the camera shows it but it is uh, brand spanking new except from uh, a few blemishes which uh, occurred after uh, dropping it or over tightening the front um, nozzle cap so I needed a, a pair of pliers to uh, undo that again um, also something I learned never use tools on your airbrush <laughs> but anyway uh, it still works um, I sometimes use it for uh, very big large areas which need to be gloss coated and then it works fine uh, I put the pressure on my compressor a bit down and uh, it does the job um, I used it for uh, years and years on end and it was my only airbrush and I, I could 
cope with it very nice. Uh, in the beginning, I uh, always used Revell or Umbral uh, enamel paint, uh, used paint thinners for it, and gradually I uh, went on and used uh, the water-based stuff like Vallejo uh, or, uh, in my case, Revell Aquacolor, which is also an acrylic uh, water-based paint. Uh, this thing did it all um, and did it quite good. Um, so um, after some years, I um, realized that I could uh, perhaps do some uh, detail work, and that's where I uh, made a mistake in thinking that only uh, high-end, expensive airbrushes uh, will do a smashing job. Um, believe me, I know guys who make better work with a lousy crap ten-dollar uh, airbrush then uh, I can make uh, with a high-end 200 plus dollar airbrush. Um, it's not only the airbrush that makes good work, uh, it's also the guy holding it. Um, never lose that from your, uh, from your mind. Um, and don't over-invest in your materials. Um, if your skills are up to it, uh, then do or so, of course, because um, a high-end expensive airbrush has advantages. Um, First of all, it looks good. Um, second of all, um, it works good. Um, in many cases, better or more uh, subtle. Um, it has more finesse. Uh, I think that in, in, in that case, there is a big difference. Um, meeting uh, a fellow modeler who sold his um, airbrush and sold his airbrush compressor um, made me acquaint uh, this brand, which is called Black Bull, it is sold in Holland quite widely, um, and this was uh, actually my first airbrush, which had a bit more finesse to it. Um, from the looks of it, it's uh, quite the same as the Revell one. It is a double action, um, a small uh, integrated paint cup. Big difference with this one is, and I'll unscrew it and show you is the type of nozzle used in this one. And I think the camera could show it. Visible. I think it is. Um, this is a very tiny nozzle. Um, all companies uh, deliver it with such type of spanner to loosen it. Um, and for this uh, airbrush, um, you could buy uh, spare parts quite easily, um, and they are very cheap. So I thought, um, well, hey, <laughs> what are you guys all rambling about uh, with your high-end uh, Iwatas? Um, your uh, idiotically expensive harder and steam bag airbrushes, when something like this does the job as well. And as I learned and progressed, um, I learned a bit more about the workings on an airbrush, uh, what's important in an airbrush. Um, and of course, um, as with everything uh, which looks nice, um, you want to have something uh, more expensive. And as soon as my um, modeling money um, let me do it, I went and bought this guy, which you all know is the Harder Than Steam Bag Evolution. And there it is. Looks wise, uh, nothing new, uh, and you all have seen it. The majority of you guys know how it works. And I, uh, I was new to this one, so uh, I had to find things out. Um, first thing I noticed was that this uh, trigger was much more sensitive. And you could actually uh, pull it down a little and let a little air through. Uh, and on all the others it was more an on and an off switch. <coughs> with no, uh, no progressing uh, power between it. So that was an advantage. Um, the color cup which can be changed uh, and interchanged for a bigger one, which in this box uh, is delivered with the airbrush. 
And there is a, an, quite an array of uh, available nozzles for this type. Um, and in all fairness, um, as with the first airbrush I showed, these nozzles um, are ideal. They are great to clean, um, easy to clean. Uh, they are big so you don't lose them in the carpet. Um, I really love this airbrush and I uh, used it to death. Um, I found out that um, with that 0.2 nozzle in this I could freehand some camo and I went back in my uh, thoughts and said, well hey, why can't I do the same with the black ball, which also has a 0.2 nozzle and needle in it. Um, why is it different? This clogged up more easily, um, it's jammed sometimes. It, to make a long story short, it um, didn't always perform as well as the harder than steam bag. And that let me believe that only expensive stuff works well. So, what I did next was up the ante again, and I bought this guy, the Infinity. Which looks so smashingly beautiful for me that I, the first year I owned it, I never used it. <laughs> I was afraid to uh, make it dirty, uh, to damage it. And um, what's the use of an airbrush you don't use? So, uh, um, I used my birthday money that year. Um, I added some myself and I bought this one. And I was uh, very pleased with it. I drilled the first three hours when I uh, was at home again uh, over the box so I had to clean it several times <laughs> um, and uh, after I started using it uh, basically it's the same as the uh, Evolution only difference is that um, the Infinity has um, an array of um, things you can uh, change on it for example you can um, alter the uh, spring pressure which makes the trigger heavier or lighter um, you can um, set the back end um, to a certain uh, treble so that the trigger will always move um, in a fixed distance. If you're always doing the same, dotting something or whatever, um, it, it's, it's fixed. So, um, some advantages uh, over the evolution again. Um, and this one was delivered with a 0.15 nozzle and needle. Um, and actually, uh, 0.15 um, is in many ways um, too small for us. You use it for uh, very uh, runny inks um, and those types of uh, material. Um, and then last but not least, um, I went the wrong way around or <laughs> I started somewhere in the middle. I bought um, the middle of the range first, the Evolution. Then I bought the high end, and uh, then I bought a used Ultra, which is um, the basic spray gun uh, from Harder and Steamback. It is a bit more uh, generic. Uh, the paint cup doesn't have a, a thread on it, it just uh, pokes in the body. Um, it's a bit conical, so it's, it's uh, fixed where you leave it. But from the working point of view, it's uh, exactly the same. Uh, the trigger is a bit heavier than uh, on the Evolution and on the Infinity, but otherwise it's a... Uh, uh, how do English people say it? Um, bread and butter, or the workhorse, um, from the airbrush range. Meanwhile, I uh, bought a second one, so I always had a 0.2 and a 0.4 uh, available in my stand. And um, I occasionally use the uh, Evolution and once in a while I use the Infinity, um, but to be honest, um, with these airbrushes um, and my knowledge of airbrushing, um, I make equally good work, um, and that was my whole point of this video. You don't need top of the range, high end material uh, to do nice work. For instance, and uh, then I'll come to my conclusion and show you a bit of the technical stuff I learned which improves your airbrush immediately. These things, or I have another one which I bought just for uh, testing purposes, and because I saw a, a video of it on the 
from the YouTube channel. These things. Um, the one I have in my hand is uh, from a brand called Veda. It's a WD-130. WD-130. I think this one uh, from Black Bull is uh, sold under the same brand um, range and is called, I think, WD-134 or 135. I'm not sure. But anyways, um, these airbrushes um, are sold very widely. And um, as British people uh, would say, cheap as chips. This thing, um, to get to Holland um, in a black box like this, um, with a spanner, uh, a little booklet, and um, I don't think there was a spare needle with it. Um, I, I think I dug this one up from uh, some other uh, stuff I bought. Uh, so it's delivered with a no point, hold on, three, yeah, as you see on the side of the box, no point three. Uh, nozzle needle. I learned that uh, for um, I think this was uh, 20 euros so for you guys um, in England uh, it would be 17 pounds um, in America uh, I think 22, 23 dollars 24 perhaps uh, quite cheap and um, when I received it um, I had learned some stuff about airbrushes and the important features on it. Um, don't let anybody ever tell you anything wrong. Um, when it comes um, in the box, when you uh, receive it, please take it apart and clean it first. That's really important. And another important thing I learned, and um, when I applied it, um, I instantaneously had a 200% better um, image on what I uh, spray painted on performance of the airbrush uh, as total. I took out uh, the little nozzle, I took out the needle, and you all guys know uh, with these airbrushes um, that works. And when you take a magnifying glass, <coughs> you will see that when the needles uh, are delivered, uh, or when it's uh, into the, in the airbrush new, um, they are quite rough. Um, they have uh, some nooks and crannies in it. They are, of course, uh, for the feel they are uh, flat, but uh, when you look at, the, at them through a magnifying glass, they really aren't. So what I did, um, I have a small Dremel tool, uh, and I put the end of the needle in my chuck, and uh, holding in my hand I had a small piece of 800 uh, grit uh, wet and dry sandpaper, uh, which I used wet, and then I, uh, at the lowest RPM, I just let the needle turn and polished with a piece of sandpaper. And after 800 grit, I started using 1000, and after 1000 I used 1200, and I think uh, that... So, so sorry for the <coughs> hiccup in the video. That was my memory card running out of space. Uh, another wise lesson. Invest in an 8 gigabyte uh, SD card instead of a 2. You cheap bastard, buy some uh, less airbrushes. <laughs> Anyways, um, where was I? Um, I gradually uh, polished it, um, starting with 800 grit and then uh, up to 1000, up to 1200, and that's where I stopped. And when I looked at it again under the magnifying glass, uh, it was as uh, smooth as a baby's butt. And it really is. It still is. Um, and it's clean, very clean. Uh, no blemishes or uh, discolorations uh, in the material. It is very smooth. And this really, trust me, this um, made the airbrush uh, get at least 50-60% better performance-wise. Um, next thing I did <coughs> was to change the standard delivered spring in the airbrush, which is this thing. Um, I looked at the spring and I thought, where have I seen these before? And uh, when I was uh, riding a small leather the next day, I thought, hey, <laughs> ain't these in the uh, ballpoints? And yeah, they were. So I uh, changed it for a ballpoint spring. Um, a 
ballpoint spring is a bit weaker, uh, which makes the trigger uh, much more uh, sensitive, which makes it uh, less jerky. Next thing I did, and, uh, which is also the last thing I did on the uh, tuning, as I can say it uh, was a bit of a tuning. I took the airbrush uh, apart completely and uh, got the trigger out. And what I did was just look at uh, this attachment point, uh, the stem to the uh, trigger itself. The stem is made out of brass. Uh, the stem, oh, sorry, the trigger itself is uh, metallic uh, stuff which has been uh, nickel plated. And there were some burrs on these ends, and some as well over here, and some in the middle. So with a small piece of wet and dry uh, sandpaper, I sanded them away, and then finally I uh, noticed that uh, this is the, the point um, with which the airflow is uh, controlled, or which uh, you press down uh, onto the uh, valve. And I uh, greased it with a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of uh, white um, Vaseline, uh, what's it called? Um, yeah, I hope it's it's the good word. Uh, or is it um, petroleum jelly? What's what's the correct name? It is the stuff um, um, which women uh, used to use for their hands um, in the old days. Um, and then. I put everything together again. I tried it. Um, and as I said before, um, never doubt the quality of uh, the high-end airbrushes because uh, there is a difference in quality. It is. Um, but never um, listen to the guys who say you need a high-end airbrush to do uh, good work, because it isn't true. Um, with this airbrush, I think someone um, um, which is really good in airbrushing uh, could make very, very, very good work with these uh, cheap airbrushes. Um, I did uh, just few small modifications um, which are easy to do and which made uh, the airbrush uh, stand out um, from the way it uh, was delivered uh, to my doorstep. Directly from Hong Kong <coughs> for, uh, as I said, 20 euros. And now it works fine and I uh, often do some detail work with it. Um, I like these uh, airbrush types because they have a big paint cup which is fixed to the body and has a, a lid on it, and in my clumsy hands, um, that can uh, often make the difference between a ruined model um, or a successful uh, painted model. So, um, for these things, you can buy uh, the parts, uh, the caps, uh, the nozzles, the needles um, for just a few bucks. So, um, to all you guys, my conclusion. High-end stuff is marvelous. It looks good. It feels. It feels good. It works good. But it's never a necessity to have. You can make nice work with uh, one of these. And um, as your budget is limited, or uh, when you just start uh, with this hobby uh, and you don't want to invest uh, a lot of money, uh, this is a good alternative. Uh, it's widely available through eBay, uh, and I'm sure in. Uh, all you guys, uh, countries, um, there is a shop selling uh, similar items. Um, as I said on eBay, 20 euros, 17 pounds. Uh, I've seen them cheaper, but then uh, the delivery cost is uh, very high again. So, um, yeah, well, that was basically my video. Um, I hope I haven't uh, bored you all to death. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and for all you young guys out there, as Aaron says, uh, uh, come to the hobby. Uh, give it a go. Uh, buy a cheap kit. Uh, buy a, a, a basic uh, knife 
and a little uh, tube of glue um, and just do it. It's fun. Um, and it hasn't, there is no need for it to be great. Um, your first work um, will always be um, so that you uh, want to improve on it. And uh, hey, pff, I'm still doing it more than 20 years and uh, I'm far from perfect. I've seen a lot of you guys make much more beautiful work than I did. Um, but one thing I can always say on each model, um, I had fun. That's what our hobby is for. Thank you all guys for uh, listening to my rambling. Uh, and I uh, hope you liked it. Um, until the next video, it's me signing off with a well-meant bye-bye.